Condylar fractures, as we know, are intra-articular, are attached to collateral ligaments, and therefore are important to understand that, and it involves a very key joint of the hand. The various kinds, that's the first thing that you should remember, that it's not just one kind, it could be unicondylar or bicondylar, each one having a different character. And you must remember that they can be rotated, the displacement, depression, revolution of the fragment depends on the direction of the fracture and the vector of the force applied. Like this one, which flipped completely, I was able to milk it into place and put 0.6 or 0.8 KYs. That's the important thing to get a good result. If it's irreducible sometimes, you need to then open it and fix it, but the collaterals must be retained. And how do we retain those collaterals? It's by going distal to the proper or in between the proper and the accessory collateral ligaments. So that's where the position should be to get a good result. How do you get to the collaterals? Well, you need to go beneath the lateral band, which is like that, and make the cut there, and underneath that you see the collateral ligament. So that's how you get there. How should we fix the long oblique pattern fractures? You go in through the same approach, and you could put in a couple of screws. What about this? This one's on the volar side, so there's no point going from the dorsum, and you see that when you flex it, it's highly unstable, so you need to go in from a Brunner incision, take apart the A3 pulley, get to the flexor tendon, take it aside, take the volar plate down, and get to the fracture like in this one, pin it down, put a screw, and get a good result. So it's the approach that matters, to think about where that fragment is. Here's one that's exactly on the opposite side. So that's where it has come from, that's how it's gone. So you need to go in from the dorsum. I was lucky in this one that there was an extensor tender rupture. So I went through that, got the screw in, tested the extensor tendon repair, and checked that the screw was in good position. So once you know all of this, you must also remember that you have just one chance when you're putting an implant in. Don't screw it up like this. Use the proper implant or you're going to have a lot of problems. So check your implant before you start your surgery. Bicondylar fractures could be separated like that in both planes and you need to bring them together. These wires should have been a little thinner, but once you take the wires out, you get them to move and they're going to be okay. What if they flip, then you got to go in. When you need to go in, you need to approach it from both sides of the central slip, like in this one. This is the one side, the other side was similarly approached. And these were fixed to each other and then to the main fragment to recreate the articular surfaces. So you see that you have to recreate the articular surfaces. You have to get immediate mobilization. So that's the trick, not wait until some time. The, day you, the moment you finish stabilizing the fracture, you start moving it, else in such fractures you're not going to get good results. Finally, what if you miss the bus? Like in this one, he's a surgeon, he's an orthopedic surgeon, some wires were placed in, and this is how he completely disrupted, was unable to do anything with his hand. Seven weeks later, you can see the disaster that's there within, and you need to then go in again from both sides of the extensor tendon and bring those fragments back into place so that you get a good articular surface. Look at it from both sides. At times, this is another case, but you might need to go in from the center of the extensor tendon, from the central slip, but you've got to be very careful. You may lift off 20, 30 percent on one side, but the other side should be left alone. So decide which side you want to lift off or in exceptional cases, you may use what is known as a Chamay approach. I wouldn't suggest this to most people, but in reconstruction, this is a good approach because you can actually see everything very, very clearly. So that's the flap that's lifted up that way. And then pin it down, and you would be able to then see on table, uh, Anand. Yeah. Cancel, select, I don't know. Okay, that's... Okay. Right, and then start the other one as well. Anand, you're rusty. What's happening to you? Wake up. <laughs> okay, so he's back. He's a prolific arthroplasty surgeon and is doing a lot of surgeries right now. And uh, very, very difficult reconstruction that was. So in conclusion, condylar fractures of the proximal phalanx, they are intra-articular and unstable. 
they need to be accurately reduced and stabilized so that you can start immediate movements. Soft tissue respect and proper implant placement are the key and rehabilitation is not only important, it's also mandatory. Thank you very much.